Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. <clears throat> so I've been concentrating on my notes from Emmett Fox, one of my New Thought teachers. And this is the idea. In some way, it seems like it's goal setting. It seems like it's human excellence. It seems like it could be perverted to sales. But it's really understanding how your outer mind and inner mind work together because they're really one. It's strange when we use the words outer and inner or tip of the iceberg and the part of the iceberg that's submerged or the conscious and the subconscious. It's all the same thing. Basically, it's saying you can have whatever you want if you're willing to pay the price by bu building the mental equivalent. And the way that you do that is first you acknowledge that you're in touch with the source of all good and that your inner voice is encouraging you. You could say it this way, spirit is asking you to take a step forward and following your heart's desire was a plant that was put in there to help you follow that beckoning from beyond like a homing device telling you to come home. So the idea is to the extent that one can mold the outer conditions by your thoughts, by your free will, by your reasoning, by your intuition. As it says in one of the old texts, the human being has dominion over all things. Now, can we do it with stewardship? Or can we do it like we're the masters of control? Which so far, that's what we've done. But once you understand that, then you can move into the teachings that I've gotten from my Native American <clears throat> mentors, which is how do you honor confidence inside yourself? Well, first, you have to believe in yourself. Then you have to show by your track record that you do what you set out to do. And if you learn how to do that, you find your way and you have plenty of help. You never do this alone. You learn to anticipate consequences, adjust where needed, and stand your ground. One of the best ways of learning how to do that is committing yourself to something greater than you. That's where you discover how your vision becomes reality. And then you not only just talk the talk, you walk the walk. And you make impeccable choices in your life. And that's what prevents unnecessary detours. So if you have that as your base, you could, as my teacher Ram Dass used to say, you begin the journey to awakening. You say, stop the world, I want to get off. And the strange thing is, although discussion about this stuff can loosen some of your concepts, but you have to face the fear of unconditional love. The only way you can get to the unconditional love, as far as I know, is you got to open up your third chakra and deal with the anger, the jealousy, the envy. Otherwise, the power doesn't go up any further. Can't get to the heart, and then the throat, and then the third eye, and then the self-transcendence. So meditation is certainly one of the practices that is recommended so that you sit still long enough. Because this is a crazy thing to realize. Most of us don't take responsibility for this. That when you let go, you realize you're the one who's been holding, causing the situation by trying to fight against your attachment. Letting go gives you miles, mileage. Letting go gives you strength. Even if things arise again, you got to keep let going, keep letting go, stilling the mind, concentrate the mind, focus the mind. If you've been force-fed religion and it doesn't fit, Sometimes you react and say, I'm not going to worship any form. You just want no nonsense and clarity. But you can't re reject devotion either. That's still clinging. So open your heart. Whatever form comes to you, that's the one you're going to indulge yourself in. And that's where you're going to find love. And that's where you're going to find purpose. Everyone and everything is a moment-to-moment -moment creation of spirit unfolding. And our job is to learn how to tune into it to the extent that we can. So open the mind, open the heart. It's scary, it's vulnerable, but that's all you have. All you can do is offer your connection to your form of deity. The more work you do on yourself, the clearer you get, the closer you get, the more you keep letting go. To like Gandhi, my life is my message. 
So with desire, anything you want, eventually you're going to get. So we should sharpen up what our desires are. That's what they say. What's the only desire that you should have? The desire to let go of all the other desires or the desire to offer everything up? So make your consciousness available to yourself, first of all, and then serve everyone with love. That's the journey to awakening.